Here's a way to make your chords more interesting. So what I'm going to do is play some basic chords and then show you a trick I used to sort of relate it to, I did a lesson on drone notes, it's sort of related to that. Basically adding like a constant note into all your chords can make them a lot more interesting. So I'm going to play um, the simple chords from the key of D major. So D, A, G, I'm going to do that three times. D, A, G, D, A, G, and I'm going to do E minor, and then G, A, I'll do this twice, G, A, so it's going to be D, A, G, So that sounds really standard, like a folk song, or it could be like a rock song if you did some pentatonic over it and did more like power chords with some distortion with those chords. But what I like to do is then I'll think, well, why don't I keep a note constant throughout all the chords? Um, so I'll keep F sharp constant from the from the um, first chord, the D major, this note is F sharp. So I'm gonna make sure for every chord I'm gonna keep this note here. So I'm just gonna play the same chords, but every chord I'm gonna make sure I add F sharp into it. So then it's gonna sound like this now. It sounds a lot more interesting all of a sudden, and the chords get fancier names. Um, like this is D, and this would be A6, and this is G major 7, and this would be like E add 9, and then G major 7, and A6. But really, I'm not thinking about that at all. And normally, I never, like, I like to use fancy chords with the weird names. But really, I've learned that I usually don't, like, be like, oh, this song needs to have A6 in it. Like, even though I might use an A6, normally I'm just kind of doing it by ear or using some of this kind of strategy where you're keeping notes constant. Um, so I'll do it one more time, and then I'm going to add in a different note. So this is with F sharp. So... brighten it up so I'll add a higher note so I could add A. This is the fifth fret. So for each chord I'm gonna keep A in there. So the first thing would be D. E minor is kind of stretch. sounded pretty cool or you could do maybe add E in there the whole time so it would start out 
making sure to do D sus2. Oh, and real quick, the names of those chords. This is D, A, this would be G, 6. No, that would be G at 9, with the A on top. So D, this is just regular A major still. This is still regular D, regular A with the extra note. This would be called G at 9. E minor with A would be called A sus4. G9 and A. So, or you could add E into, on the top. Um, so it would be like... Pretty mellow. So that sounds pretty normal. I, that's actually a pretty common one to add E on top of all those. And the chorus there is D sus2, A major. G6, I really like that chord. And then with the E minor, it's just regular E minor. And then G6, A. Or you can start to get more creative and maybe add like B the whole time on seventh fret. So this one would take more thought because you can't really stretch from all the way down here. This would be pretty much impossible. So what you have to start doing is using bar chords. Here's D major with B on top. Sounds kind of cool. Sort of like mellow, jazzier sound. Then I need A with B on top. And here for G, this is possible, but it's pretty hard. Minor, you could do up, up here. G, A. Or if you know more tricks about guitar and a little more advanced, you could do it like here's a D chord. So I could play with the D string, I could just go. That's easier for the D chord. Then for A, I can use the open A string. So. For G, I might use this G instead. Because it's closer to this B. Unless I wanted this low bass, which actually I kind of like more, so. you can start getting weirder and use maybe like C sharp in there. So this note is definitely, I just know it's going to make things a little weird because in the key of D major, it's the seventh note of the scale. Like if you play a D major scale, this note is C sharp. So adding the seventh note of a scale throughout all the chords is going to do some weird stuff. So. What I'm going to do is not hit the top string at all. I'm only going to strum up to C sharp. So the first chord is going to be. And then the next chord for A. That's normal. But the G sharp is going to be weird. So. It's pretty creepy. Whoops. That's pretty tense because what's happening there is it's using what's called the flat five. If you do it down here, this is G and C sharp. G and C sharp. Doesn't sound quite as weird as this. So, one thing you can do is kind of like toggle it. So, the 
side definitely sounds dark. And then you could go to E minor. G. A. So the mood of this one is definitely dark. So this is D major 7. you would call this. This is D major 7, A. This is just G with flat 5 in it. Add flat 5, I guess. E minor with C sharp is E minor 6. Back to that G with the flat 5. A. So this is a really good way, like normally when I make up a chord progression, I start to do this, and the more advanced way to do it, which is harder to explain, um, is when you have like a melody that you want to work into all the chords. So like let's say you made up a melody like... Then you could think, well I need to have that going while I do the chords. My first chord was D, so I need, I need to have this going. And then I gotta do the same thing when I get to the E minor. Oops. So then you end up making a lot of discoveries when you have a melody that you're trying to work in and it can get pretty complicated. But really, like most musicians, they do this stuff by ear. If you're trying to overthink it because you're a beginner, it's just super hard to do this stuff. You kind of just got to play long enough where you can do it. But sometimes like knowing, sometimes like writing it out, like tabbing something out if it's really complicated, like if the melody was. something much harder I'd have to sit there for a while to figure out how to do that with the chords but normally it just happens more naturally like while you're playing chords you can start to create melodies on top so normally like I create the melodies on top of the chords would be like so D I kind of have the chords in your head. Yep. I just create a more complicated melody that sounds like this. Oops. Oops. So it's going. So if someone gave me that melody ahead of time, like you try to work that into the chords, it would be pretty hard to figure out. Whereas doing it the reverse, like you have your chords. It's a lot easier going that direction. So anyways, hope that was helpful.